Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over four tests and get into all of them specifically. First we're going to look at the gelatin test, coagulase, urea hydrolysis, and nitrate reduction. So with that said, let's get started. First up we have gelatin hydrolysis. Gelatin is a protein that's derived from collagen. And basically, bacteria, some bacteria are able to break it down and use it for a sense of nutrients. And it does so in two steps, where the gelatin is broken down to polypeptides and eventually into amino acids. Now, there's a specific enzyme that's used in conjunction with water in both steps. Remember, hydrolysis means water breaking, so we need water. But it uses a specific enzyme in order to break down the gelatin to polypeptides and then polypeptides to amino acids. What is this enzyme? The enzyme for the first step is gelatinase. So if gelatinase is the enzyme that breaks down gelatin into polypeptides, what's the enzyme that breaks down polypeptides to amino acids? So don't think too hard about it. The same one, it's the same one for polypeptides to amino acids as it was for gelatin two polypeptides. It's gelatinase. Gelatinase is the same enzyme that breaks down gelatin to polypeptides and then polypeptides to amino acids. That one enzyme does both things. Now the way that we'll be doing this experiment is a simple stab technique. So after we stabbed and inoculated the bacteria, we're going to take it out and examine it. One of two things will happen. Either the solid will have become partially liquid or completely liquid. And in that case, we are our bacteria is gelatinase positive, meaning that it did break down the gelatin to the polypeptides and eventually to the amino acids. However, if the solid remained and there's no liquid, that means we're gelatinase negative bacteria was unable to break down the gelatinase into a form of nutrients for itself. And here we're going to look at the coagulase test. In the coagulase test, we're going to take a slide and we're going to split it in half. On half A, we're going to have the saline plus the bacteria. And on side B, we're going to have the coagulase plasma and the bacteria. Side A is simply a control to show us what a negative result is because there's nothing in saline that the bacteria can react with that will cause it to agglutinate. On side B, if there is agglutination, it'll look very, very different from side A. It'll have some clumping forming to it, and that is a positive result. You'll do this for two or three different bacteria on each slide. Now, what I want to know from you guys is what is the difference between free versus bound coagulase? And as a tip, they they both cause agglutination, but the thing that they react with is different. So what is that thing that they each react with that make them different from one another? And as I said before, there is a test tube version of this. I didn't do it when I took the class. But if you do have to do it, it's the exact opposite of the gelatin test, where you start out with a liquid, and if you get a solid at the end of the result, then that's a positive result. And also, too, is there's a difference. When you figure out the difference between free and bound coagulase, you can tell me which, which one of these, either the slide or the test tube, tests for free versus bound coagulase look at urea hydrolysis. This is when we have certain amino acids that undergo decarboxylation to produce urea. This urea, when it interacts with urease and water, is broken down to ammonia. Now most microbes can do this, but in this test we are only able to detect the presence of rapid urease bacteria. But if most bacteria can do this, why is it that only these rapid ones are the ones that are detected through this test? 
Moving on, all we do here is a simple inoculation of the bacteria into the broths. And here in the middle, we just have the broth, which is in orange. This here in the pink yields a positive result, while over here in the yellow is a negative result. Eventually, the amino acid is broken down to ammonia. Now that ammonia, I just want to know from you guys if you can tell me whether it's acidic, neutral, or basic. And as a tip, the way that I'll word this question is, if the phenol red is that orange color at a pH below 8.4, and that pink color when above, what does that say about our end products? In other words, when amino acids are broken down, do they yield acidic, neutral, or basic end products? The nitrogen reduction test. First, we're going to inoculate our bacteria into the test tube, and we're going to incubate that. Afterwards, we're going to examine our, our durum tube to see if there's, a gap, if there's a bubble in there. Now, the thing here is that the microbes that we use, we don't want them to be fermenters, because if this bubble is caused by a fermenter, we don't know if this gas is caused due to the process of fermentation or the reduction of the nitrogen. So if we don't have a fermenter, that means that this bubble came from a microbe that can reduce the nitrate. This shows a positive result, and we're done. We don't need to continue on to step four. So if we don't have a bubble here after step three, we're going to add reagents A and B. Reagent A is going to be sulfonic acid, while reagent B is going to be naphthalene. You add these two reagents, and we're hoping to get a red color. That red color means that we had a reduction of the nitrate to nitrite. And then this is caused by the nitrate forming a nit nitrous acid. And if we get to this point, we're done. We saw that our microbe reduced the nitrate, and that's it. We don't continue on to step five. And lastly, if we don't have a red color after we add reagents A and B, we're going to take our sample and we're going to add zinc. When we add zinc, one of two things will happen. Option one is that we get a red color, meaning that in the presence of zinc, nitrate was reduced to nitrite. But that wasn't done by the microbe. It had to be done in the presence of zinc. It, the microbe didn't do that on its own. However, if we get option number two, it will remain yellow, meaning that the nitrate was reduced to something else other than nitrite. And as you can see over here on the right side, we have our three positive results. So a yellow after step five, a red after step four, or a bubble here after step three, all mean positive results, all meaning that nitrate was reduced in some way, shape, or form. So as we saw with nitrogen reduction, there's a couple ways to do it. Either the bacteria uses nitrate reductase, and all that does is the reduction in a single step. But if it goes through the process of denitrification, that's a multi-step process. If you guys need more help with this, look back to your notes on the PowerPoints. Um, I think it should probably be like on the first or second day. You guys should have those PowerPoints. Now the question that I want to ask you guys, is this process anaerobic or aerobic? So just to briefly touch over everything, in the gelatin test we're looking to see if our solid became a liquid. With coagulase we're looking for a glutenation. Urea we're looking if certain amino acids are converted to ammonia. And in the nitrate test we're looking to see if that nitrate was reduced to some other form, whether it be nitrite, nitrogen, or in some cases we don't know what it is, but it still is reduced. With that, that's the end of this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email.